Venice is drowning. Most people think that it's because the land is sinking, and while the land is sinking, it is only sinking about half a millimeter to a millimeter every year, which makes it much lesser of a threat than the water rising. The city is no stranger to its streets flooding, having dubbed the phenomenon Aqua Alta, or high water. Aqua Alta is naturally expected to occur multiple times a year, mainly during the fall and winter. However, now more often than not, having to walk through the water becomes having to wade through it. The natural tide of Venice can get up to 80 centimeters, and if it rises to 140 centimeters or higher, about 90% of Venice will be flooded. And you might think that almost doubling the tide height to reach that amount of flooding would be pretty rare. But the tide has actually reached over 150 centimeters several times the last couple years during Aqua Alta, flooding most of the city. And this flooding isn't just a little bit of water on the streets. There can often be over a meter of water that pedestrians have to walk through. The city and its people deal with this flooding in a couple of ways. Many residents don their knee-high galoshes, and the city sets out raised platforms in the very populated travel routes to assist people in walking places and keeping dry. The city also sends out text alerts and sounds a siren when the tide is expected to get high within the next couple of hours. Some even go to the city square to go for a swim in what is usually a large swath of dry concrete. However, none of these things do anything to actually help stop the problem, they just work around it. Some city authorities have said that they are considering raising buildings to keep them from flooding. And raising hundreds if not thousands of old historic buildings would be a hard and very careful process. Not to mention the giant churches that reside right next to the Venetian shores. Which brings us to Venice's current plan to lessen the amount of flood water. In 2003, Venice began construction on a $7 billion flood project called the Modulo Supermentale Electromechanico, MOSE, or MOSE for short. The name means Experimental Electromechanical Module. It is designed to be deployable floodgates when the tide threatens to get above 110 centimeters. So how does MOSE work? Most of the time, the floodgates are filled with water and sit at the bottom of the lagoon, allowing water and sea life to cross over them with ease so they don't disrupt the lagoon's ecosystem. But when the tide gets above 110 centimeters, compressed air is pumped into the gates, causing them to rise to the surface to block three main water inlets of the city. They fill with water again once the tide is receded, returning them to the seafloor. However, this plan has a lot of flaws. First of all, while the construction began in 2003, MOSE has yet to be completed. Originally, it was estimated to be functioning in 2014, and due to multiple setbacks, the gates quickly became unexpected to be complete until 2020, and now as they reach the final stages of construction, they are set to be completed by 2022. So the project has taken at least four more years than originally expected, and has required another $800 million to proceed with the construction. Also, the barriers were designed with the 2003 statistics on climate change and sea level rise. The barriers were designed to accommodate two to three feet of sea level rise. But now projections are estimating that the Mediterranean Sea could rise about 5 feet before the year 2100. This would cause the barriers to have to deploy twice a day at high tide. This could be a problem for a couple of reasons. First of all, the more the barriers are deployed, the more wear and tear they will endure, causing them to break and wear down up to 20 years earlier than they were originally designed to. Also, the more they are deployed, the more they will disturb the ecosystem of the lagoon, which could potentially have very adverse consequences. And this is why a permanent barrier wasn't built instead. So what can we do? The sad reality of it is not much. We need to make sure that we do our best to mitigate as much sea level rise as possible by reducing as many factors in our lives that cause climate change as we can. There are no cars in Venice, so things like CO2 emissions from exhaust is something that they don't contribute to, but they have to deal with. And make sure that if you visit Venice, you know there's a great possibility that you may have to do some waiting. Hopefully, soon scientists and engineers will come up with a new and better way of making sure that Venice doesn't become Atlantis. Ah, I can't read it right now. Venice. 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 It vanished. Oh god. Or Moses, for sure. Moses. <laughs> Moses. It's a Moses. Gotcha. And it is. And it's 2000. Sea change. I sound so judgmental. Ah! Okay. Mediterranean salad. Doing it again. Ah! And a squeak toy. Hopefully soon. <laughs> okay. Why is that hard? It's not hard.